everyone, Kate here to talk about the books that I inspired you to read. I put out on Instagram and then as a community post here on YouTube asking about if there were any books that I had convinced you to read. And I have to say, this was such a fun video to compile information for. I felt kind of emotional reading all of these book titles and, you know, sometimes uh, maybe a video doesn't get as much engagement in the comments. You're not sure really if anybody was interested in what you were talking about. And then seeing these book titles, just my heart is full. So thank you for being a part of this wonderful community. Uh, thank you for um, just being willing to try new books that you've heard me talk about. I love trying books that I've heard other people in the book community try um, and read and love. And it's just such a wonderful little corner of the internet to be a part of. And um, I cannot wait to tell you about all these books. So first in the list, and I'm just gonna pull it down, okay? I couldn't believe there were 11 of you that said you read Wives and Daughters because of me. And that makes my heart so happy. I just, I loved, I loved getting to hear how you loved Wives and Daughters like I did. And um, yeah, it just makes me so very happy. And um, I, I already, I'm getting so excited because I'm gonna be rereading this next month. And it's just, this book never lets me down. It never lets me down. And I think it's just down to Gaskell's just unbelievable characterization. The way that she makes these characters feel so flesh and blood. And I love that the characters of Molly and Cynthia were inspired by her daughter, Mita. So she divided up kind of the more, the virtues for, for Molly, I feel like, and the vices for Cynthia. But I still feel sympathy for Cynthia as a character. And it's just makes me so happy because I love this book and I love it when other people love this book. Um, then a number of you said you just tried, you tried Elizabeth Gaskell in general because I kept talking about her and I will continue to talk about her. Her writing is amazing and I am so delighted that uh, I have convinced some of you enough that you went and you tried her writing. Uh, the next book was Mr. Harrison's Confessions. This is ironic because my friend Christy left this comment. We were supposed to buddy read Mr. Harrison's Confessions. Um, we were going to do it over... Valentine's Day week because part of the plot hinges on Valentine's Day. Um, and I ended up not being in the mood to read it. And so I didn't do it, but Christy loved it. I finally read it this last October and I enjoyed it, but I, I don't know why. I, it was just a bit of a miss for me. Um, so I think it's that I've seen the miniseries Cranford that takes Mr. Harrison's confessions and puts it in there. I've seen Cranford so much um, that I maybe prefer it on film. I'm not sure. Uh, but the next one was North and South. I love North and South. It's one of those really special books that has a little bit of everything with romance, social commentary, uh, a very twisty turny plot. And uh, it's just, I, I just adore it. Uh, so loved that, that um, I convinced someone to read North and South. Then Mary Barton, three uh, votes for Mary Barton. And um, I'm so delighted. Uh, that you read Mary Barton and hopefully you enjoyed Mary Barton. I love all of the atmosphere in Mary Barton. I will say the characterization regarding the character of Mary is not the strongest, but I think everything else is so strong in the novel that it doesn't feel like much of a disappointment, if that makes any sense. Uh, then I saw nine people, I couldn't believe this, nine people tried the Betsy Tacy series because I talked it up. That was the one that made me really emotional because I feel like Betsy Tacy gets really overshadowed by a lot of the other coming of age series for young women or just coming of age literature for young women, which no shade to that, you know, the other literature. But I mean, no one, nobody needs to talk up Anne of Green Gables. You know, so many people know about Anne of Green Gables and so its readers will find it. But there's plenty of people that could love Betsy Tacy, but they don't know about it. Um, and so they'll never find it. Uh, so this made me so delighted. And then several people also commented Emily of Deep Valley. Emily of Deep Valley 
I love so much and I only came to it as an adult. Um, so it's one of those, I didn't know about it as a kid and then I kept putting off reading it when I was older because I just knew it would disappoint me. And then it's now one of my favorite in the series. I just, or in the world of, of Deep Valley. I love it and adore it. Um, and it's such a meaningful book. That was the book that I kicked off the Kindred Spirits Club with. And it was such a wonderful way to start off the year. And I know that a lot of people were very enthusiastic about it. Um, the next one was The Heir of Redcliffe. I have actually lent out my copy to a friend right now. So I will put up a picture of it. And um, it's so fun to see this right after my reread because I'm like, no, it holds, it holds up. Like I still love it. And oh goodness, I love this book. And um, the characters are so special to me. There are a couple characters that when I did discuss it on Patreon, people pointed out a couple of them weren't developed as much. And so I don't think everyone has quite the same amount of care that's put into their character. But overall, it's such uh, an in-depth look with these characters into their lives at this at this time in their life. And while they deal with um, a lot of kind of trying to uh, not take the judgments that other people make and judge for themselves what they think about certain situations. And that can be a really hard thing to do, just to be unbiased about what you think um, is happening in front of you. It's really, really interesting. Uh, the next one that is very similar to me in the same category as The Heir of Redcliffe, and that is Deerbrook. This book, I really, really appreciate um, the contrast in the two sisters personalities, Hester and Margaret. And what's interesting is the first time I read it, I really sympathized with one sister and thought the other one was like, oh, you know, don't care about her. And then when I read it again and with friends, they pointed out kind of the strengths of the sister that I had overlooked. And I thought, oh my goodness, wow. You know, what skill Harriet Martineau shows that um, in this character that I had overlooked uh, to begin with. Uh, then the next one is Village School by Miss Reed. And several of you said you had tried Miss Reed because of me which I just love because I'm newer to loving Miss Reed. And um, so that makes me really want to uh, just continue trying all sorts of books um, to so that kindred spirits that have similar book tastes that I do can find these books as well. Um, so yeah, I, I just love the love for Miss Reed and people that are, some of the people that are joining in the Follow Us to Fair Acre um, read along have this is you know they've read Miss Reed many times but some of you are totally new to it and it's wonderful to be on the ride for the first time with you. Uh, then Romola by George Eliot. Several George Eliots. Uh, Romola, a couple votes for Daniel Deronda, a couple votes for Adam Bede, and Middlemarch and that just makes my heart so full because George Eliot is one of those authors I think if you haven't tried her you think maybe I'm not cut out to read George Eliot and all you have to do is try. You know, you can take you can take a year to read a George Eliot book and then you might end up finding a new favorite author. So I love the adventurous readers out there willing to persevere with George Eliot. A couple votes for Lorna Doone. Um, Lorna Doone, I have a kind of mixed experience now, which is very sad, but it was the Victober group read on my Patreon two years ago. And unfortunately, I didn't enjoy it as much. I think though, I was on a time crunch and I was rushing it too much. And I definitely will return to Lorna Dune at some point. Um, so I don't want to um, give up on loving it on a reread, but I don't think it's ideal for Victober. I think Victober books, the ideal is very plot driven. <laughs> um, then the next one, uh, two Hardy books, which is very ironic. Um, Far From the Matting Crowd and The Mayor of Casterbridge. The Mayor of Casterbridge, I loved the first time that I read it, but the second time around, it, I tried rereading it after reading Jude the Obscure. And it was too soon. It had only been like six months since I read Jude the Obscure. Um, Far From the Matting Crowd has lived on in my memory, along with The Return of the Native. At some point, I will revisit those books but I don't want my experience of Jude the Obscure to have tainted what were favorite books. So I'm kind of scared to return to Hardy. Um, I don't know. We're go I I'm going to have to return to them at some point because I did love those stories. 
Uh, then the next one, and this blew me away, was a couple people said Jane Eyre, which is such an iconic Victorian novel. And I say to anyone, you know, who's where to start with Victorian literature, I think Jane Eyre is a wonderful entry point. And it's just very readable with it being written in first person. And the character of Jane, I admire so much. Um, and I just, she is one of a kind. And uh, just as, as soon as I finished my reread this October, I was so devastated to be done with my reread. Um, it's one that I will revisit time and time again. Um, and then, is that all of the, okay, still a few more Victorian reads. So I loved seeing all of the Victorian love on here. Um, Kate from the novel Nomad commented that she loved that I recommended Mary Elizabeth Braddon. I picked Lady Audley's Secret for our Victober read, and now every Victober we read a Mary Elizabeth Braddon together. Um, and several people said Lady Audley's Secret. That made me so happy. Um, I think it's a wonderful Victorian novel that gets overlooked sometimes. And I think some people get put off by it because they say, well, you can tell what the secret is very short into the book. I don't think that's the point of the book, though. The point is the length that Lady Audley will go to hide the secret. Um, I was able to guess the secret fairly on. And, uh, and it's just, it's the art and the storytelling that I love about that book. And there are some really fascinating characters in it. Then the next one was In the Roar of the Sea by Sabine Baring Gould. What an amazing book. It is just a powerhouse of a book. And it is so, you have to come up for air after you've read it. It's so all-encompassing. Uh, it takes place in Cornwall, right by the seaside. There are smugglers involved. There is a church that is half buried in sand. Um, and there is uh, just scheming and plotting dastardly deeds and a really toxic romance all, <laughs> all rolled up into one amazing Victorian novel. So the descriptions of the landscape are like Hardy, the very powerful atmosphere. It, it's like the Brontes. There's also humor in it. So it's like Dickens, but the characterization is like Gaskell. It's amazing. Um, then three Wilkie Collins books. Um, so it's funny because he has been hit or miss for me, but these three are all ones that I have absolutely loved. So the first one being The Woman in White. At some point, oh, now I'm like, maybe I should reread that this Victober. <gasps> maybe I will treat myself. I will have to see. Uh, I'm a little scared, though, to reread it. Like, maybe I won't love it as much. Will I? I don't know. I think I will, though, because the character of Marion Halcombe was such a highlight for me. Then The Law and the Lady. I love that book. And lastly, um, Man and Wife. I read that this October. What a book. It is so, it, it, I honestly think that's my favorite Wilkie Collins now, which is wild because the character of Marion I really love, but this story, it is deliciously dark. And it, the darkness in it to me is more intense than in The Woman in White. Other readers might feel differently. I'm not sure. Um, then uh, Treasure Island. I love Treasure Island. It's such a wonderful adventure tale. Long John Silver is one of my favorite characters in all of Victorian literature. Uh, the Mill on the Floss. This is interesting because this is one of my lower ranked George Eliot books. Um, but it is on there. And um, I, it's still a really remarkable book because it's written by George Eliot. So I love that somebody tried it. Uh, Don Quixote. Uh, I think somebody said that I made it feel less intimidating. And I, I stand by that. I think the thing that is challenging about Don Quixote is the length. The writing style is very accessible. And it's such an amusing story. It's wild. Um, I really love Don Quixote. Three Men in a Boat. Such a humorous, fun journey. Great Expectations. That made me so happy. I love Great Expectations. It's a perfect Victober read. Grania. The Story of an Island. This is a really lesser known Victorian book and I love that somebody tried it. Um, it's another one that's just so powerful and the weight of the emotions that it carries. Uh, Alan Rain. So this person said they didn't try A Welsh Witch, which I had said, but they tried A Welsh Singer and they really loved A Welsh Singer. So on my Victober five star TBR for this year uh, is Torn Sails. And it's going to be one of the ones I'm going to work on soon. I've just finished um, The Perpetual Curate. 
and just filmed a review for it. So this was one that was on my five star TBR. So continuing to wait, make my way through the five star TBR. Um, Anthony Trollope, just trying Anthony Trollope in general. That makes me so happy. I know that I feel like I haven't read that much in comparison to Katie from Books and Things, but I love that um, the amount of enthusiasm that I did show got someone to read it. And hopefully eventually I'll catch up with Katie soon. I'm going to do it. Uh, then Diary of a Nobody by George Grossmith. This is a really lovely, just lighthearted, amusing uh, Victorian read. Uh, Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. Uh, just, yes, all the Gaskell love. Maud, the Illustrated Diary of a Victorian Lady. Is it right here? No, it's not. Oh, it's right here. I have to shift some things around. It's all it up. So this is one that's out of print, but I always tell people, check online. Abe Books has um, many copies readily available because this is just so delightful to go through here and see all this. Oh, I love it so much. Um... Then The Christmas Hirelings by Mary Elizabeth Braddon, a big departure from her suspense fiction. And I really love this. It's a very charming, sweet Christmas book. Um, Agnes Gray by Anne Bronte. I really love this. I think if you like the quieter books, I think Miss Reed fans would really enjoy Agnes Gray. That's what I'll say. I think that's all of the Victorian books. Um, then The Lunar Chronicles. What a fun series. It's a YA sci-fi fantasy dystopian fairy tale retellings. What a combination. So I'm currently rereading the series and I just have the last one winter left. So it is very breakneck speed though. That's why I needed some time before I picked up the next one. The Blue Castle by Ellen Montgomery. I was so excited to see that. That's one that is just so delightful to get lost in. Um, all about Valancy Sterling and her life that is amounting to be, uh, you know, kind of less than she was hoping it would be. Um, then let's see, The Wolves of Willoughby Chase. That was a really fun one. That's a middle grade suspense kind of mystery. And I love the atmosphere in that one. It's just delicious. Um, Christmas on Mill Street. This is a, a lovely small town Christmas kind of book. And it is just so full of fun, all about a boy's experience, uh, experiences uh, in a small Midwest town. I really love it. Uh, a Town Like Alice by Neville Shute. This is such a larger than life love story. It does have some really harrowing elements in it, so you have to go in knowing that. It's a World War II setting. Um, and I think it was published not long after World War II. I think maybe the mid-50s. Um, then The Wednesday Wars by Gary Schmidt. This is one of my all-time favorite middle grade books um, about Holling Hoodhood and his time in elementary school in one year. It's set during the Vietnam War and so all of the tensions that um, were around because of that. And then when, how do you live with family that has really different uh, political views than you? Um, good for today. And I just, oh, I love the Wednesday War. So I'm very excited to revisit that with the Kindred Spirits Club. Um, then Patricia Polacco's books. So it's interesting. I have not talked about her on BookTube because they are, uh, she writes picture books. But I, this year, I posted on Instagram that I am working my way through all of Patricia Polacco's picture books with my boys. I had not really given her a chance because her art was not quite my style. But after reading a couple of her Christmas picture books. Now I have just completely fallen in love with her writing. And now the more I get used to her art, the more I'm coming to love it. And she has such heartfelt plots. And about half of the picture books so far have made me cry. She just can really tug on your heartstrings. And she writes from a lot of personal family stories. So they're really special picture books. The Beatrice Pro Prophecy by Kate DiCamillo. I love that book. It is so beautiful from start to finish. I love historical middle grade. Um, and it's the medieval setting and kind of the power of words and story in it is just delightful. Two of Rosamond Pilcher, Coming Home and Winter Solstice. If you want um, kind of just uh, 90s, cozy, domestic, um, upper middle class vibes, then try out Rosamond Pilcher. Uh, My Antonia by Willa Cather. My friend Joanna um, wrote that and she is a longtime friend from college and I love that. We read 
my Antonia together. I'm pretty sure we did it in a book club. And then she enjoyed the other Bennett sister. Um, I love, I got a couple people to read Witch Hat Atelier. It is this really very charming um, manga series and I can't recommend it enough. Um, it's like a Studio Ghibli movie, which I think they're making a show of it. I want to check in on that of Witch Hat Atelier. Not Studio Ghibli, but a show is being made of Witch Hat Atelier. Um, the giant biography, The Brontes by Juliet Barker. I did come out of that having very mixed feelings about it, but it's an amazing book. And now I kind of want to revisit it or maybe I'll read a different Bronte biography. I'm not sure. Um, a Peculiar Combination by Ashley Weaver. It's the first in her new Electra McDonald series. It's a really um, fascinating historical mystery series. I've only read the first one though, so I want to read the second. And I think the third one has either just come out or is coming out very soon. Um, several people tried Mary Stewart. That makes me so happy. Um, and I just, Mary Stewart has lovely romantic suspense novels. So if you are all interested in romances or mysteries and these combine the two, I would try Mary Stewart. Um, the Wind in the Willows, somebody reread it. So I love a, cu a couple times people said they reread books because of me, kind of books they had read a long time ago and then they had forgotten about them. So I rereading is kind of my favorite kind of reading to do. So I loved hearing that. Um, Georgiana's Secret, this is a fabulous, uh, sweet romance all set on board a ship. So Georgiana um, poses as a boy and it is just a delicious sweet romance. Um, Miracles on Maple Hill, one of my favorite middle grade books. And I love, this is perfect for springtime being just around the corner. I love, I love this book. Uh, several mystery series, the Armand Gamache series by Louise Penny, Inspector Lindley series by Elizabeth George, and the Grandchester Mysteries by James Runcie. These are three of my all-time favorite mystery series, so I love seeing that. Uh, then another Christmas book that I loved, Last Christmas in Paris. This is a historical fiction, all uh, written in letters, and the audiobook is just as lovely too. There's a different reader for each letter writer. Uh, this Beautiful Truth by Sarah Clarkson. That's one of my all-time favorite books. It's meant so much to me, and it really did change my life, honestly. Um, and then lastly, Romantic Outlaws. This was a fun um, dual biography of Mary Wollstonecraft and Mary Shelley, and it was a wild ride. Like, these are not people that I want would have wanted to live like. I don't look up to them as role models, but they were so fascinating to read about. Um, they, it was just wild. I mean, anything where Lord Byron is going to be one of the people involved kind of tangentially, you know, it's going to be crazy. Uh, so thank you everyone. If you took the time to write a book title that uh, I inspired you to read, thank you uh, for taking the time to uh, watch my videos. Thank you for taking the time to leave a comment. It's just lovely to um, share my bookish life with you and talk about the books I'm excited to read, the books that I love that I've read, and um, just all my reading hopes and dreams. And I hope that you have a lovely day and I will be back with another video soon. Bye!